just lost Jack now, so... Oh, we can do it without him. 47. <laughs> <laughs> Want to do a piece of he is. Right, Shark, you're on. Warm welcome. And just while you make yourself comfortable, I just, um, I, some of us have a little bit of insight into the hours and hours and hours that have been involved in this process to, to Shark and the wider team who have negotiated, retooled, rediscussed, renegotiated, rethought this process to get to this stage, I really, really want to acknowledge you and um, we are getting some very good feedback from a wide variety of groups on the process. So just before I hand over to Jacques, we're going to discuss the design proposal for the future port study. We're not discussing the port issue itself. Jacques. Thank you, Madam Chair. I will just take I've got a few slides. I'll just take you through some of the key things in the in the report, and then we can just I can answer questions as, as you may have them. Um, so essentially, the report deals with four, <coughs> and the proposal deals with four main things. The first being um, it proposes a collaborative process. For uh, can, you, can you pull it forward? I will sit it forward. It. Yeah, just pull it forward to you. It um, we're proposing a collaborative process um, to go through the study. And essentially what we're saying is f for that process to be truly collaborative, we, we have to hand the process over to stakeholders and to the people of Auckland, and they need to be able to have a discussion around the port. Um, what they then, through that process, they need to look at the future, they need to understand the implications of all these options that they are looking at, and then come back to the committee with recommendations on what is the best way forward here. Um, that is the, the stakeholder and community process. The council has a governance role, and the proposals um, say that that role gets played out by the council making decisions once that study is completed and when the recommendations come to the council. So that's essentially around the process. Um, around the study scope, all options are on the table, so we're not excluding any option. It goes, it goes beyond the port precinct, so it's not just where the port is at the moment. It looks at the wider Auckland <coughs> impacts, it looks at the Upper North Island impacts, and even the New Zealand impacts. Um, and essentially the scope Essentially, the scope is a full cost-benefit analysis around the economic, social, cultural, and environmental dimensions. That's the one part of it. The second part of it is the opportunities that all of the options um, may or may not afford Māori. So there are two essential parts to that study. The third part is around the project costs, and the last part is around the broad timeline. Um, so looking at the, at the collaborative process, because there are so many stakeholders and people with a, with a high interest in the study, we are proposing to set up two structures. The first is a stakeholder reference group, and that being quite a large group, probably around 40 to 50 people representing the stakeholders. Um, and that group will be made up firstly of Māori as a partner in that process, um, and then of various sector groups um, that we've made up seven of those with under which we can group the different stakeholders. And then we're also suggesting that the Ports of Auckland, so the company itself, um, needs to have representation on this group. So that's the larger one. From that, then setting up a smaller group um, that we call the consensus working group. And this will be the one that does the actual work. So this will be the workhorse of the whole process. Um, and, 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 and the representation on that group would come from the larger stakeholder group. And essentially, uh, there are three tasks that this group <coughs> needs to do. Um, 
they need to finalize and agree the study scope, which we will commission on their behalf. They then need to work with the experts or the consultants that will do all of this work. They need to work with them and understand all the stuff that comes through that study. And based on that, that eventually then make recommendations to the council on a consensus basis, what is the best way to go forward. Um, and once that is done, then the governance role of the council kicks in. It will have to make decisions on whatever comes out of that. The next slide is just to give you a bit of a feeling for how that process might work. Um, so essentially it would start off with a very broad-based invitation to stakeholders to participate in this process. And then through a facilitated process, the stakeholder reference group will be established. And again, through a facilitated process from them, eventually the consensus working group. I'm, as I said, that group probably would be around 12 to 15 people. It just gets really hard to to actually do work if a group like that is much bigger. So that's just broadly what that process would look like. Attachment A in your agenda has a list of stakeholders that we've identified up to this point, but we're also asking in the recommendations that the, we can go and add more stakeholders. Just over the last few days, <coughs> the agenda has become public. I've had lots of emails of people registering their interest, so we just keep on adding them. Um, I should point out in the <coughs> consensus working group, so the smaller group um, will be whittled down from the stakeholder reference group. There are two <coughs> exceptions to that. The report proposes um, that Māori have an automatic representation on the consensus working group, as does the port, suggesting that the port has a one representative, no more than that. So essentially, um, what we do is we take the, the broad group, the stakeholder reference group, and there's a number of things described in the, in the report what, that, what they would be doing. Um, that gets whittled down to the actual working group, which is where the bulk of the stuff would happen, and they are in turn supported by the consultants, the experts that will do the actual study. And there's a relationship between all of those um, engagement right across the three. So what we ask in committee today is to endorse this process. So the principle of collaboration and the process of what we're proposing, how to go about that. If I move on to the, to the actual study, so looking at the scope of the study, um, what I'm showing you there, so it's, like I said, there are two parts of the study. The first is the full impact, the cost-benefit analysis uh, across social, environmental, cultural, and economic dimensions. The second part is what opportunities are there for Māori in terms of all of the options that are being looked at. So that is just a broad outline of, of some of the detail, but you will have to look on page 51 and 52 of your agenda, and we will have to work through the detail in that, um, because what we're asking you again is to endorse that draft scope. This scope will then go to the CWG, and it is one of their tasks to do further work on that, to agree that and finalize the scope. Um, just a quick one in terms of how we would go um, procuring that study. Um, so today the committee endorses a draft scope, like I said, that goes to the um, CWG. Once they've agreed what that scope is, it, it comes back to this committee just to ratify it. We need some formality around the procurement. Um, so it is not around changing that scope again because the CWG has signed that off. We just ratify it, um, and essentially we put <coughs> it into a request for proposals. <coughs> tenders go out, they come back in, the CWG look and work through those. Um, they probably engage with the consultants, clarifying a number of things, changing a number of things. They select the final tender, and we do the procurement.
Um, I probably just need to say one thing. So that diagram shows quite a simple, straightforward process. It probably is going to be more complicated in that it most likely would be a two-stage process, something as big as this. Um, there would probably be initial tenders that would be looked at at a, at a broader level, and from that they will select the ones that they want to go and do the further detail. So it's probably just a bit more complicated than that. Um, looking at the project costs, um, at the moment there is no specific funding for this for this project. Um, First thing around the study, because the terms of reference has not been finalized, it of course gets a bit hard to know exactly how much it's going to cost, but just based on our past experience, probably likely to be something between five and 600,000. So that's for the study. Um, then in terms of supporting the two, the stakeholder work group and the consensus working group, um, so we would have to remunerate people it's just all the stuff that goes with that. That's probably another 550, and this is an estimate. Um, so which brings us to the totals that you see there. It is proposed that the whole project be funded from the mayoral budget. So we're not asking for, for any extra money to do this. It'll be backstep again. And lastly, um, just a bit of a broad timeline. Um, trying to make this go as fast as we can, remembering that this is a collaborative, pro collaborative process um, and people need time to work through things. Um, but still, making it as fast as we go, it, it unfortunately still comes to a year. Um, I do not believe we can do it any faster than that. So if the um, committee endorses the recommendations today, then probably looking at June, July next year, for the recommendations to come to this committee. Um, Madam Chair, that is essentially the highlights from the report. Okay. <coughs> I've got Councillor Webster first and then we'll go from there. Oh, well, thank you very much, Jacques, and I know how much work you've put into this too, so I endorse what the Deputy Mayor said before. Um, just looking through the list of stakeholders, um, and I realise you've got Fonterra there, and the, this might have come up in, you know, since you put it out, but I mean, apart from the fact that Fonterra actually don't um, put product through the port because they take it all to Tarana, um, but there's no one there from, so far, from sort of producer groups. I'm thinking whether it's Federated Farmers or whether it's, you know, Wine Growers Association, I, not necessarily covered by employers and manufacturers. I'm thinking of some of the vegetables, you know, yep. that sort of thing. Yep. So someone from the wider producer group. Councillor Casey. Um, I'm, I'm going to move an amendment to the, to what I see as a <coughs> deficit in the process, and that is leaving the local boards out of the equation until the end, when there's options to be put forward. And I'm going to move that we invite the Waitamata local board and the Devonport Takapuna local board to be part of the stakeholder reference group, simply because they need to be there to shape the options. They are the people on the ground. And, and what, what I feel is that the people have been shut out of the process so far, and their representatives are the members of the local boards and the governing body. Well, the governing body will be making the final decision. The local boards need to be part of the process. So I'm hopeful that we get some support for that. That's a way of, of making sure that the public are represented. Councillor, I understand what, what you're putting forward and you have every right to do so. The, the critical nature of this is this is a public process. This is actually taking some of the, the politics out of this and genuinely handing it over to the public. I agree that some discussions um, need to be had as we look at the scope and that sort of thing with, with our local boards. I think that, that for informal process should be followed. But in looking at this as a genuine community consultation and stakeholder process, the deliberate decision was made to neither have councillors nor local board members on this and to genuinely hand over. The decision hasn't been made yet. <coughs> I'm, just, I'm just explaining. To genuinely hand this 
to the stakeholders and to take the politics out of this. So we either trust the community to embark on a genuine community-focused project and step back and trust them to make the right recommendations. We report it and update ourselves on the progress, and I think the boards can be updated, but the recommendations here are not to include politicians in the process. We make the decisions. We can't have two bites at it. But if you want to form up an amendment, yep. please bring us one. I'll be moving that we include... Uh, I, throughout the report, I mean, this is a staff report, I, I just I take exception to the... the um, the language you see in, in paragraph 45, the, pro, the proposals in this report suggest that given the governance role boards have, they not be directly involved in the collaborative process. And so my amendment will be specifically to, to involve them in that process. I don't think it's in the, the best interests of democracy to exclude them. It's not putting politics back in, it's putting elected representatives as a, as a key stakeholder. And I think that they deserve to be there. So that's my, that's my, my amendment.